Now, Deuteronomy 18. So that you know, we are reading from the King James 1611 Bible. It's black and white with markings. I marked my Bible. And what we're going to do is we're going to read the words as the Bible says. And if it hits and kicks your religion, your religion's wrong. Now, it's absolutely a fact that this, there is a thing to Bible words and numbers. Leviticus 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. The priests, the Levites. All priests are Levites. Not all Levites are priests. And all the tribe of Levi. So see, there's, there's the priests, the Levites. Priests have to be Levites. They can't be Gentiles. Then you got a heathen God. And then there's the tribe of Levi. The children of Levi who are not of Aaron. The children that are of Aaron that are definitely of Levi, they are the priests. So walk up to the man that wears his shirt on backwards and ask him if he can show his pedigree back to the children of Levi. I guarantee 99.9% .9 of them will not be able to, and they're not priests. In the Bible, they would be heathen priests. And shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They don't get any of the land as theirs. When you look at a map, Old Testament map, and you see Dan, Judah, Issachar, Nephtali, the 12 sons. Two and a half tribes are on the other side of the Jordan River. And the rest are on the proper side of the Jordan River. You will not find in that land division Levi. Levi will get Jerusalem. And they will get 48 cities in total inside their brethren. But as a piece of land that you would see on a map to say, here is Levi. Here is Benjamin. Here, no, you will not find that. They are given land. Because they are to be amongst their children. They are the representatives of God to the nation of Israel. And they are not to be separate. They are to live amongst the brethren. And teach the brethren. And guide them throughout the year. As Christians are not to be off living off in a monastery. Or monketary. Or in the mountains of a guru that you have to go find. No, we are to live amongst the world. And we are to teach the world. And we are to tell the Christians what they are supposed to do. And how they are supposed to do it. And as, as the priest that has no mark in the land, Christians have no mark in the land. This is not our home. We are pilgrims passing through. And Revelation 1 says we are priests and kings. We have no mark on this land. We have no mark on this earth as a place, as our settling place. If we were to die, if the Lord would come soon or any time, we would be lifted off this earth. So Revelation 1, in the, in the priest, you see as us. Now, we're not of Aaron, we're of Jesus Christ. We're not the sons of Jesus Christ, we are his bride. Nor inheritance of Israel, they shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire in the inheritance. As with the office of the pastor, he is to live and survive on the offerings given by the congregation of his church, and many too often... It's sad to say that the congregation starves the pastor out and his family. In all reality, Bible doctrine, a pastor is not supposed to have a secular job. His job is supposed to be studying, reading the word, so he can help his congregation, he can visit his congregation, he can pray for his congregation, he can do the church business, he can help. And then having a secular job will prevent him from doing his office 100%. And made by fire, that's the animals that were brought on the altar that were burnt. And those offerings, the best part, were given to the priests. And we've studied that before and in, in through Exodus, Leviticus. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, as he has said unto them. What an inheritance, God. We got this piece of land over here. Oh, we've got God. <laughs> And without that piece of land and us, you don't have nothing. 
And when the priests went afoul, when the children of Israel went afoul, they went into Babylon and their cities and their places were destroyed. As it is today. There is no priest today in Israel. And this shall be the priest's due. This is what he gets from the people. From the people. He gets it from his brethren. From them that offer a sacrifice. Their sacrifices goes to the priest. Whether it be of ox or sheep. They shall give unto the priest the shoulder, which is the best part. And the two cheeks. You understand those words. The back half of the animal. And the maw. There is low or no fat. I found in these pieces. And then again, remember the fat is to be burnt. The children of Israel were not allowed to eat the fat. That was God's. So here are pieces of meat. If not, no fat, very low fat. And that fat would burn off in the fire, most cases. You would probably have to maybe do some trimming. So see, the offering that you give to the priest, it really doesn't need that much work added to it. It's already taken care of. Again, there are pastors out there, they do tremendous amount of work, and they're starving. The first fruit also of thy corn. Now, what we're looking at, okay, there are people who brought animals, meat. Priests were allowed to eat meat. Now, there were certain regulations of meat. So what do you do when a church or religion says, oh, no meat? Well, what's the ox and sheep for? Well, that's for wool and that's for work in the fields. Burnt? <laughs> you got a bunch of burnt oxen out there plowing the field? Really? That's the meat that would go on the grill. <laughs> You know, that's, that's what it is for the priest. It's an altar for the people and for the priest. It's a grill. How many Americans offer burnt food on grills today with that smoke going up to heaven and they're not doing it or even thanking God for it? And we got a joke today. One day of 365 days is supposed to be a thanksgiving to God. That's a joke. So... If you don't have ox, if you don't have sheep, you don't have, you got corn. The tithe of the corn went to the, to the sacrifice, went to the priest, and they would survive on that corn. And that corn is not popcorn. It's not the green ear of corn that you get in the store. That would be grains, that would be wheat, that would be barley, that would make your bread and other bakery items. Of thy wine. So, if you don't have a field of grain... You got a grape yard, you got a grape vineyard, and you make wine and grapes and raisins. You would bring your first fruits to the priests. And that's how they would survive. Of thy oil, that would be olives. First of thy olives, the first of the olive oil. Olive oil was not only used for cooking, but it was used for anointing. And the first of the fleece of thy sheep. So there is a fleece of sheep besides the meat of verse 3. If you were to take your sheep and fleece your sheep and, and shave your sheep, there would be a principal part that would go to the Levites and they would make it into the yarn and do what needs to be done. Or you could help the priest even more. You would do what you do to the sheep to make the yarn and there you go. Shalt thou give him, that's the priest. Now you see where the Roman Catholics and the, and the religions that have the, oh, we got a priest and you got to give to them. Are they Levites? That's the question. There's no other debate. I'm not going to go in. That priest, the Bible says he's got to be a Levite. If he's not a Levite, he's not a priest. There you go. Biblical. For the Lord thy God has chosen him out of all thy tribes. Are we under tribes? No, I'm sorry. The tribes that are here have been put off in reservations. Those were tribes. Those were the Na Native Americans. But we're not even talking about those tribes. We're talking about the 12 tribes of Israel with Levi put off and Joseph broken off into two, Manasseh and Ephraim. Those 12 sons of Abraham. 
Manasseh, Ephraim, especially blessed in Genesis chapter 48 and 49 by Jacob himself, that God can put Levi off the side and say, those two sons will make the twelve. It's not Ishmael. Ishmael is princes. It's not Esau. Esau becomes dukes. So out of the children of Jacob, tribes would match. Uh, I mean, out of the tribes of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob would match because his children become the tribes. Ishmael becomes princes and Esau becomes dukes. To stand to minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever. And we are in a break right now. And you can't say, well, forever, and then God said, well, forever ended 70 AD. That's not forever, is it? So that priest tribe has got to set back up, and they will during the tribulation period, and they will during the millennial period. So what do you got? I'm saying we're hitting religions here. What do you do when a church and people teach that God is all through with Israel. We're done with them. What's a congregational church? What does a Roman Catholic church say when God's all through, but we're going to have priests forever? We sit up our own priests. You see that? You know what the congregation church did in New England by killing all the witches, by killing all the Indians, by killing everybody, those guys in the black hat? We're setting up our own church according to the law. You know what the Roman Catholic Church did over the years by killing nations and killing people and killing heretics or set up a new nation under God. But I told you, we're not under land rights. Our land is New Jerusalem. And you're stealing that right from the nation of Israel. And you do that as God's all finished and whatever that, I forget the play, you don't even want to know where that is in the New Testament. God's not all finished with them. There's a forever priesthood right now. We're in a break called the church age. And how does God even finish that one off? He says in Revelation chapter 1, those who are born again, those who are children of God by the finished work of Jesus Christ, we are priests. How's that? I'm a priest. You don't call me father. I don't wear my shirts on backwards. I represent people saved and lost because they'll come to me and they say, can you pray to God for me? And I offer up prayers, the incense altar. I give to the Lord. You don't need to know how much. You know that's none of your business. There are people, as far as the street ministry, ministering before God. They have given us things for us to use and enjoy, and they don't even realize what they're doing. God says, "You've done a particular ministry. You've done it in my name. I'm going to reward you." But a greater reward is the crowns and and rewards we get later. And then from that point. If we are serving the Lord correctly and rightly and keep ourselves under the blood of Jesus Christ, there is a time that we can, in the land of Israel, get a right to the inheritance of land, <laughs> the rain, cities. But that's not right now. See, so many Christians today, they want the land, they want the cities, they want the place, they want... That's later on. It's not America. It's... A land under Israel, under Jesus Christ, the King. And if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of all Israel, he's, he's allowed to move around, where he sojourn, temporary dwelling. Sojourn is when you come in, you stay a few nights, and you pack up and you go. And come with all the desire of his mind, whatever he's got on his mind, into the place which the Lord shall choose, that would be Jerusalem. You got a priest doing that in Judges. He's sojourning. And he, through Micah, becomes the Roman Catholic Church in the Old Testament. And then the Danites come. And they become a tribe of the Roman Catholic Church. Read about it. We'll get there eventually, Lord willing. So here's a Levite. He's in one place. He's going to another. Then he shall minister in the name of the Lord his God. As all his brethren the Levites do, which stand be stand there before the Lord. So he's in the cities and he is teaching. He may not be in Jerusalem. He may not be working at that temple. He may not be doing that tabernacle service. But where he is, his, his homeland that has been given to him, he's teaching the people. Jesus would go all around, and by then, from 
Daniel and Babylon, they, they became synagogue. That became from Babylon. But these Levitical priests in the land of Israel, once they got in there, would, they would do just like a church service. They would gather on the Sabbath and they would open up the, the rolls and they would teach from the Bible, or the scriptures. When thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now see where men in churches want that. I want that title deed. They've been fighting over Jerusalem since Jerusalem has been Jerusalem. Why is it that one particular city, that one particular mountain, that everybody's been fighting over that thing for years and years and years and hasn't been yet? Right now the PLO wants it. Right now Jordan wants it. Right now Ishmael wants it. Right now the United Nations want it. In verse 8, they shall have like portions to eat besides that which cometh of the sale of the patrimony and that would be inheritance from their fathers so their fathers would hand them things down but they don't have oh you mean what a levite's father gives yeah, them? yeah levite the priest's father uh i don't know what like the scroll or the scrolls maybe a certain knife he dedicated to God uh, the, the, another thing I would probably think too it would be that it, it's not spoken about a lot but there's no mention of remaking the clothes but, when Aaron died on Mount Horeb God said take off the, the garments off him and put it on his son why would he sell it I don't understand. they shall like portions to eat besides that which cometh of the sale of his patrimony they were allowed to sell those things. The food was allowed to be sold. If he had so much sheep, okay. the Bible says he could sell and make money. And like, like, like a, there are pastors out there who sell things on the internet. eBay, and then they use the money for what they need. I when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth me. That's what men want to, we do it in the name of God. No, you're not. That's a small G. Thou shalt not learn to do, do the abominations of those nations. Now I said there are priests in churches today. They are not Levites. They are nations. And they are doing the abominations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire. Or that uses divination. Okay, pass it through the fire. Now, I just got a new computer here. And I forgot to bring this up. I, there was something I wanted to read here. You gotta bear with me a minute. Oh. I forgot to bring this up. Now, give me one minute here while I talk to you. There are things I can't do with this new computer. Oh, shoot. Oh, where is it? It works out. Right. Oh, I was, I was, this other night I had this ready. Why is it not coming up? Oh, I'm in Excel. All right, while we're doing, while we're waiting for the same look, what's going on here is they're killing their children in the name of religion, of course. And I had something here I really want to. Okay, I got the right one now. Let's see. That's the Word documents. And I called it Bible Notes 1. There it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Now, the name of this God is called Molech. Molech means king. K I N G. Eight times in the Bible. And the pass through the fire, 11 times in the Bible. He's also known by the name Malcolm, M-I-L-C-O-M, three times in the Bible. He's a bronze statue, and he's heated with fire. And the victims are thrown into this God, and it was used for ch child sacrifice. Now, about this God, uh, let's see what we're going to read here. The victims were thrown into, there has been associated with ports of, no, that's not what I want. Um, I apologize. I didn't bring this up earlier. Okay. 
In 1920s, they had produced evidence for child sacrifice in Carthage, as well as inscriptions including the term MLK. Molech means king, and they have found inscription on this idol, MLK. Just reading what they're saying. Uh, again, there's another god, Cronus. Molech is a biblical name of a Canaanite god associated with child sacrifice. The name of this deity is also sometimes spelled as Molech, M-O-L-E-C-H, Malcolm, M-I-L-C-O-M, or Malcam. M-A-L-C-A-M. Uh, the name of Molech results from the Second Temple worship and is based on the root M-L-K, which stands for King. So when someone was given the initials M-L-K, they had been doing some research to be called King. There are a number of Canaanite gods with name based on this root, King which came similarly across with Molech, including uh, Malcolm, which we already talked about, which, which means great king, uh, which you know, it's the Amorite God. That's, I just thought that was kind of interesting how, I'm not saying, I'm just saying MLK and king shows up with giving your child over to him. And this would have been practiced through Roman Catholic history. And what would happen was you would get a father, and a mother who would meet together and produce a child out of wedlock and what would you do to get rid of that child you do exactly what they did in Canaanite times you see they were getting together and they weren't supposed to be getting together and they would produce a child that they weren't supposed to produ produce a child so what would they do with those children that were what would you do with them well give them to a god this is post abortion Today, it's abortion. Oh, I got pregnant. They want to get pregnant, so just go ahead and do the procedure and get rid of the child. That's what they're doing here. And this statue, this image, bronze, brass, was levered, had levers and pulleys and gears. And what it would do is you would put the child, I am told, into the arms of this mechanical thing, and it would activate, and it would take that child and throw him right into his stomach. God is their belly. That's got to be very harsh because the guy here crying and screaming and all that. And you would say, well, what would you do with all that noise? You would get drums to drown out the crying of the sacrifice. Now, where would else you get drums to drown out something? I don't know. Fruitful advantage, I guess. That's a personal joke. All right. So here we have a post-abortion. Children are being murdered to a small G.O.D. That doesn't happen today. No. You know, in India, there's one time a year they got this big elephant. Uh, um, we, where I, and I am told by a missionary who went there, or maybe still there, that they take their babies and they throw them under that elephant, God, and the wheels crush those babies. In 2018, there are places recorded, I don't remember where they were, but you would see babies floating down the river. And they have given them to a god. In China, babies are being killed because they're not a son, the firstborn son. That don't happen no more. The Bible's old archaic, isn't it? Really? Planned Parenthood. How many times have they taken boys and girls? You see, it says sons and daughter. It doesn't say in between. There's a there's a distinction between a male and a female in the Bible. Passed through the fire, taking their child and burning them. That's happened today. The state agencies has found children been burnt by the stove, burnt by scalding water. That you know, Bible's old and archaic. Or uses divination. You know, open up the newspaper, find out what your day is going to be today. Your tea leaves, the bumps on your head. The observer of times. 
Now, that's not watching your walk, walk uh, watching your watch or, you know, a calendar, even though that could be a God. Because I can't do something today because of the, the plans are not lined up. Or my seance person told me, avoid this day, sleep all day because it's a bad day. Or an enchanter. He produces all kinds of, you know, does things. He puts people under enchantments and he crosses his legs and he does mumble jumble, which is taught in, church, in schools in California. Or a witch. Now, you want to know about that witch? You want to know about religion? Check the history of the Congregational Church in Salem, Massachusetts. They were given the title witch. They weren't witches. Matter of fact, they found some cases they were, you know, the schoolgirls that got upset and all the thing. Or a charmer. And you find one Peter does with charmer named Simon in the book of Acts. And he has used divination. And he's put the people under a curse that if you don't take care of me, if you don't help me, oh, you won't, if you don't get buried in our graveyard, you'll never see heaven. If you don't get through our, what our priests tell you to do, you'll never see heaven. If you don't give us money, he'll spend many, many more years in purgatory. Or a consultor with familiar spirits, and that's your seance, that's the crystal ball, that's where you sit around the table, go, mm, you bring up grandpa because you don't know where the will is. That's what that is. Or a wizard. That's a male witch. That's a math, uh, math. That's a magician. A magician. And if you don't think that, oh, you just pick a, I've been preaching against magicians and all that in the Bible since long before I've watched my videos. Or a necromancer, and that's a fortune teller. Again, that's the guy, you know, you go into the flea market and you go in the booth and I poke my head and say, did you know it's coming? <laughs> Nothing more to see a sign on Nicomancer's door saying closed for business. Really, really, really good, weren't you? Now, there are nine things mentioned in this list here, and eight of them are magic. And let's, let's read verse 9 to make sure. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. Okay, so what are the abominations? What are you not to learn? There shall not be found among any of them that make his son or daughter to pass through the fire. Don't do that. Or use his divination. Don't do that. Or a server of times. Don't do that. Or a chanter. Don't do that. Or a witch. Don't be that. Or a charmer. Don't do that. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Don't you do that. And wizards. Don't be that. Or a necromancer. God says all those are abominations. Don't do it. So today for church, we're going to have a Christian magician. Don't do that. And then you can find them advertised all over the internet. You can also buy your children and pay your children to go see movies that are involved with magic or magic kingdom. <gasps> I didn't say that, did I? You want to find something interesting? You got somebody who professes to be a Christian. Go check out their Facebook. Open up the books and movies they read and see if you find somebody named Harry. See if Harry comes up in their books and movies. And then go to the parents and say, you know, listen, we're, we're Christians. I love you. I want to do it. You know, your child is involved with that pottery stuff. And you watch the parents as I've witnessed this personally. Eh, so what? What's wrong with it? What's, what's wrong with it? God says it's an abomination. You don't want to be bewitched or Blair Witch Project. You know, quick, you know, she just twinkled her nose and little Tabitha and all that. And the mean, ugly looking stepmother and the faggot. I mean, the, the sodomite. And now, look, it's in the churches. Christian teens are now adults are involved in all that junk. God said it was an abomination. You know another magic trick is done in churches? Which, which people wish I shut up. Hocus, pocus, eating, my focus, what if Duke is? This is now blood and the body of Jesus Christ laying you. That's a magic trick. It doesn't work. For all that do these things, are you ready? For all that do these nine things, 
Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you reading with me? Are an abomination to the Lord. Nothing more simple. Don't you argue with me. Don't you fight me. Don't you tell me you're doing it for God. Don't tell me, oh, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. And God says it's an abomination. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. You know why they get that land? Because the nations were doing all this junk. You know why God takes them out of the land and brings them to Babylon? Because they're doing all this junk. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. How do you be perfect with God? Don't do that junk. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of time, they do it. I don't know if they had a newspaper, but they open up the horoscope somehow. And unto diviners. That's what Moab did when they came to Balaam. That's what King Saul dressed up in Halloween looking for treats from the witch of Endor. A double. She was a witch and she divine. And what did she do? So, uh, King Saul said, bring me up Solomon. And guess what happened? No, not Solomon, uh, Samuel. And guess what happened? Samuel came up. Why doesn't God want you to do these things? Because you would put reliance on Satan rather than God. If you go to fortune teller and say, hey, what are my lucky numbers for next week? And by chance, those numbers, you win the lottery. And you say, okay, Ouija, where is my keys for the car in this house? And Ouija, yes, yes, tells you they're over there. And then you go, oh, wow. And then you pick up the newspaper, you just say, okay, I'm a Leo today, and you read it, and it says you'd avoid something, you avoid this, and nothing bad happens that day. And then you start churning your way away from God unto Satan. And they have found many people that have dabbled in witchcraft started off with a little thing. Something stupid, something much. And it has ended up to killing the family dog. It has ended up killing the family. And you've seen the horror movies. God doesn't want... This is not of God. This is not holy. Satan needs a little wedge. If you don't know what wedge is, wedge is a triangular piece of metal. And what you do is you take it, you got yourself a log, and you want to split a big log. You take it, you take a little hammer, you just bang, 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 right into the log, so it can stand on its own. And it does nothing wrong. It just stands there. You come along with a sledgehammer, you know, battle axe, you know battle axe in the Bible, you know that's Satan, right? And you ram that wedge, it goes in a little deeper, it leaves a mark, you could take it out, there's still a mark there, you're not going to get rid of that mark from the wedge. Or you can take that slam and bang it one more time. Another movie. That's in deeper. You got a bigger mark. But oh, there's a sequel. I got to go back to the next movie. I got to get the next one. You take that battle and you just bang it more. And that wedge goes in deeper. You got a deeper mark. And yeah, you can take that wedge out by the blood of Jesus Christ. But the mark is there. Or you can keep going. And dabble a little more. And that hammer come down at one point if too many times at that right moment at the at the, at the thing with that wedge will split that big log right open and then you, you can't fix it you cannot put that log back together god doesn't want you to doubt it's a wedge that satan will use to get your curiosity he got the curiosity with eve she was looking at that fruit and he put a little wedge in there and chapter three was a wedge went in more and the wedge went in more and bam we are into sin we are into hospitalization we are into fire departments and police departments we are into sin and death because that little wedge Every time a magician shows up in the book of Exodus with Moses and Pharaoh, that Pharaoh turned away from God. And they did everything that Aaron did with his rod except produce life. You are in the realm of Satan. And even if your tricks are 
fool in the eyes. It's an optical illusion. What Christian has the idea to try to deceive somebody? Is that not forbidden? Watch the fingers, watch the hands, watch the cards. It was up my sleeve. Really? Are you supposed to be cheating? For these nations which thou possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God has not suffered thee so to do. That's in the law. And John 8, 44 says, Satan is a liar and he's a murderer. And so you go ahead and do what he wants to do. Don't you realize that Satan with the Antichrist is going to make an object of idolatry going to talk? You can almost see that if you go down more south with me, where I live, Daytona Beach. Go down to Orlando, you can see things talk. I, I'm told. I've never been there. Don't want to be. I guess, I guess they do it in California, too. I was amazed. Like I said, where I grew up in New London, there was a mall, and every Christmas they would have all over this whole mall, all these mechanics. My, my wife remembers. All these mechanics. You can watch them putting presents on the tree. You can watch them putting the tinsel on the tree. You can watch the one petting the cat. It was all great and wonderful for a little boy. But now I know the Bible and study the Bible. It's wrong. They're preparing you. The Bible says in Thessalonians that Satan is going to use his powers. He's going to call fire from the sky. They're going to like a fireworks night. Ah, oh, ooh. the Lord thy God, he's my God. That's my God. The Lord thy God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribe, has not suffered thee to do so. So to do. All right, we got Satan out of the way. Isn't it funny how I preached about Satan this morning at the farm, and I'm preaching about him again? But not only did I preach about Satan at the farmer's market, I preach about God. The Lord thy God will raise up the unto thee a prophet. Now let's look at Jesus Christ. Amen. See the capital P? Now when Jesus had this ministry, he would ask questions every once in a while. He would say, who said, who, who do people say that I am? Well, they think you're Jeremiah's. Not that I said Jeremiah's is going to come back. Some think you're a prophet. Some think you're a good teacher. Some think you're that prophet. Look at John 4, 19. John 4, 19. And the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Alright. Now let's go to verse 24. The 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and true. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I am the, I, and I, yeah, I that speak unto thee am he. Well, there's Jesus Christ pro proclaiming to be that Messiah. Here's that prophet. Here is the prophecy. Acts 3.22. Acts 3.22. Now we just read about Satan and his work. And we're reading about Jesus now. Jesus will overcome Satan and his work. And let's see. What is said. In Peter's second sermon. 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, which we're going to read now, of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye bear in all things, whatsoever he say unto you. That's what we're going to read right now. What we're going to read now in Deuteronomy 18, 15, Peter said, 
it's Jesus Christ. You see a capital P? That's no ordinary prophet. So the Lord thy God shall raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thy brethren. He came unto his own, and his own received them not. So do not draw a picture of a white or black Jesus. Jews are not white, and they're not colored. Like unto me, study Moses, and you'll see Jesus. Now, you know, you know, it's one particular thing. Did Moses ever get angry? Oh yeah, that's what prevented him from going in the Promised Land. Did Jesus Christ get angry? Oh yeah. So when you see the characteristics of God. 40 days and 40 nights with God the Father. Jesus Christ, 40 days and 40 nights with God the Father. Elijah, 40 days and 40 nights with the angel of the Lord. Moses brought the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. We just can go all night long. Like unto me, unto whom ye shall hearken. If they don't, they'll get damnation. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, Mount Sinai, in the days of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord thy, my God, neither let me see the great fire any more that I die not. When God appeared unto him, Exodus 20, that scared the fire out of him. No pun intended. They feared God. Now follow along the wilderness journey, they didn't keep that fear. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. We need a mediator. We need a mediator. We need somebody to stand between God and us. And the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, a mediator. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2 and see another interesting thing that Moses and Jesus are. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And we'll start in verse 1. And we will see Deuteronomy 18 laid out in 1 Timothy chapter 1. I mean 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I exhort thee, therefore, that first of all, supplication prayers. Isn't that what priests are supposed to do? We read about the priest. The incense altar. The first time John the Baptist's dad shows up, he's offering prayer on the incense altar. They're outside the tabernacle praying. Intercessions and giving the thanks. Isn't that what the priests were supposed to do? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Be made for all men. For kings. Revelation 1. But you're supposed to pray for your leadership. And all that are in authority. That's not followed today. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. In all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. God our who? I thought Jesus Christ was the Savior. I want what the new living I don't know what the world translation says about that. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Now here's Moses and Jesus. For there is one God, amen, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Now, when the people on Mount Sinai say that mountain is on fire, the, the, the clouds, the darkness, the, the loud voice of God, the holy voice of God, the people, we can't stand it. He's going to kill us. Somebody, Moses, stand in the way. Let God speak to you and you speak to us. And I say today in 2018, God, you are so holy. I am so much a sinner. I need somebody between you and me. And there's only one, Jesus Christ, a prophet like in unto Moses. Here's the office of the prophet. He intercedes for the people 
between the people and God. And that's Jesus Christ. Verse 18, I will raise up a prophet from among their brethren, Jewish, like unto thee, Moses, and I will put my words in his mouth. What did Jesus say? Oh, I bring the words. I come in the will of the Father. If the scribes, the Pharisees, and Sadducees knew Deuteronomy 18, they knew exactly what Jesus was and who he was. Jesus came with the mouth of God. Because he is God. What did it say in 1 Timothy 2? It said, God our Savior. That's Jesus Christ. Unless you're a Jehovah Witness. I will put my words in his mouth. He shall speak unto them, the Jews, all that I shall command thee. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right there, Mark, write down Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the words. And if you got a red letter Bible, which is great, I don't, put Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John red letters. Or if you mark your Bible like I do, however you mark them. There's a prophecy of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John right there in verse 18. It's like 18, 18, 666, 666, and God is talking about his word. Isn't that interesting? But do people, let me ask my family, do people want the word of God? No. They'd rather receive a, even Christians are more interested in the mark. Or food. Or food. And yet here we see a 666, 666 talking about the very word of God. That's going to be an interesting number, 666 for the Jews in tribulation period. And when you break down 666 and 666, we got priests, we got offerings for the priests, we got Satan, Satan with his word, we got the Messiah, and we got the word of God. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, where did you see that word? You can't tell me that the Bible's archaic and the Bible, you, what is that word? It's found in John chapter 3, it's found in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation 20, and it shall come to pass that whoso will not hearken unto my words, which that prophet, Jesus, will speak, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So what does John the Baptist say? He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not have life, but the wrath of God upon right now, John 3.36, next to that verse. The require of it of him is the wrath of God, and the wrath of God, if you run the references, is hell. Now let's get back to Satan and the Antichrist, the false prophet. Oh, there's so much in 666, isn't there? But the prophet which shall presume, I like that, I like that, I'll use that word, to speak a word in my name. God has told me. The word of God has stated. Oh, I got a revelation from God. Take a couple of tongues and shut up. To speak a word in my name. So there are people who will speak in the name of God and are wrong. Did you get that? And Paul tells us that there are ministers out there that are after the ministers of Satan in Corinthians. One or two. Cannot be three. I have not commanded him to speak. Which I have not commanded him to speak. But the prophet that shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to. Did you get that? There are prophets that are going to say that God said, and God said, I did not say nothing. God has told me we can have multiple wives. Uh -uh. God has told us to. No! And people fall for it. And that's, you got to get the message today on, on the City Island Street preaching. Jesus Christ, the truth versus Satan, the liar. Because that goes right along tonight. Thank you, Lord. All right. I have not commanded him to speak. Or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Ooh. 
Even that prophet shall die. Oh, so you see what God thinks about false prophets? Death. You know what happens if people follow these false prophets? Death. And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Well, how do we know he's a false prophet? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, the Lord's coming in 1914. Nor come to uh, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The Lord did not come by in 1914, folks. So what we're going to do is we're going to twist it and change it and make it sound better. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. All right, let's bring this to the Baptist churches now. Jesus is going to come in 1988. Jesus is going to come in Y2K. Jesus is going to come March 4th. Or Could that be why? Um... Old age brain. He'll come to you about two hours later. So, Jonah. Jo well, if I mentioned Jonah at the end. Is that why Jonah was so mad? Because that would make him a false prophet. It would make him a false prophet. But then here's where you got to be careful. Yes, jo one of the things angered Job. I mean, Jonah, is, it didn't happen. He said 40 days and 40 nights. He's sitting on that city. Probably waited 41 days. I would assume. And it didn't happen. So that makes him a false prophet. But Nineveh was destroyed years and years later. So it did happen. And so what we got to realize is, all right, Jesus Christ is coming back. There's no date given. If I preach on the streets and I preach right here on the, in these ministries, and I say Jesus is coming and I drop dead and Jesus has not come. All right, in the eyes of the world, and yeah, okay, I was a false prophet. But when he does come, all right, it's true. And when we got to look at that years and, I mean, when's it going to happen? But you got to speak Bible. You got to be correct. You got to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word true. I have no business giving you a date when Jesus said, not even He knows on the earthly ministry. And it's funny because the Jehovah Witnesses will say Jesus didn't even know, but your own prophets did. 1914, 19, what? You talk nonsense. But the prophet who has spoken presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now it says, it says not be afraid of him. That would be Jonah in this situation because it's not going to happen 40 days. It's going to happen years later. And you got to wonder, did he throw that 40 days in there that God maybe not told him to do? Where did the 40... Now see, I... I, street, I preach on the street, and there are things, listen, I open up the Bible, glory to God, I preach. And there are things that come out of my mouth that should not come out of my mouth, and that's my own mouth. And that's where I come up with these ministries and say, listen, if it's not the Bible, it's me, you can throw it up in the garbage can, crumple it up, and burn it in the fire if it's my words. you got to study to prove, too, of God. Well, he said that word wrong, or he accidentally slipped the tongue and said this and shouldn't have been that. Okay, that's me and my flesh, and you can throw that in the garbage. But when it comes from the quote of the Bible, the King James Bible, and God has said it, then it's sure, and you better not throw that in the garbage. But when they, someone says that this is going to happen, and it don't happen, and it's not according to the Bible, then you're a liar. And then John 8, 44, who's your ministry? When they say that, oh, if you sell magazines and be good, you're going to, no. If you be good and have multiple wives and you can live in outer space, absolutely not. Ask your astronauts of NASA. Or if you do hocus pocus and meeny mighty mo and, and eat and drink Jesus, no. Where do you see that in the Bible? John chapter 6, he said flesh and he says about the flesh. Let's go, we'll close there. John chapter 6 will show you your lie. Because with all that mumble, he said, he that eats my flesh and drinketh my blood. So let's see what Jesus said to be true. See, you can't just break off the verses in the chapter where you want. 
In 663, we're not going to read through the, everything, but 663, when Jesus said, he did say, he eats my flesh and drinketh my blood. Now you're taking it literal. It was not to be literal. He's talking about the man. It is the spirit that quickened it. Spiritualize. Spiritualize chapter 6 when he says, eat my the flesh profit is nothing. So if you're going to eat the body of Jesus, it doesn't do you no good. You got to spiritualize. It's got to be like the manna. He was talking about manna. He was talking about to the Jews. The Jews asked about the bread from heaven. So that answers that. You got to properly divide the word of God. And false prophets don't. Jonah's prophecy did happen minus the 40 days and 40 nights or whatever he, i don't know what exactly he said god god did not put a time period on it but nineveh is destroyed and gone and i believe that would be the prophet obadiah that preaches about nineveh i think that one i, I could be wrong on that see the things on me i'm wrong i'm a sinner i can be wrong god cannot be wrong and if you open the bible and say well it's not obadiah it was See, I'm wrong. And I got to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why I, some, when I say I think, or it's my opinion, it's me, sinner.